Hey guys, it's your girl Fit Sid, and I'm back with another video. I just wanted to start this video off before I even tell you my socials, before I tell you to follow and subscribe, I want to make a disclaimer. This video is about the Naked Th Philanthropist, aka Kaylin. I think that's how you say her name. I want to say before this, I do not want anyone sending her hate. I do not want anyone sending hate to anyone involved in this. And I just mainly want to share my opinion on this topic. And I want to know, want you guys to know that this is my opinion. Everyone's allowed to have their opinion, and I just want to spread love. So before we get into this, I'm not trying to hate on her. I think her idea overall is a great idea, and I think she had good intentions with it. I just don't think it was properly explained and executed, and that's why I'm going to be making this video. But with that disclaimer being out there, I just wanted to say if you guys are excited for this, if you guys have never seen my channel, if you guys are like, who is this girl who's talking about Kaylin? Hi, my name is Sydney. I am also on YouTube as Fit Sid. I have been doing YouTube since I was like 12. And uh, here we are. So I just wanted to start this video off by saying if you guys want to follow me on my socials, you can. If you want to like, comment, subscribe. If you want to comment your opinion, please do not be hateful in the comments, but you're welcome to have some dialogue, talk it out, and um, even if you don't agree with me, that's okay. Like, I genuinely think that it's it's a good thing to have conversation about these things because they're tough to talk about, and they usually get brushed under the rug. With that being said, though, I love you guys. Um, I also make OnlyFans tip videos, so you can go to my channel and, like, look for them. I also have an OnlyFans referral link, so if you guys are interested, you can just sign up with my link, make an account, and then send me an email that you did. That way I can kind of help you out with getting it going. That's all for the intro. Let's just jump into the video. But today I'm going to be talking about the Naked Philanthropist, and she is on Twitter right now. Um, starts Making a video like this. Hi guys. Okay, so I didn't want to type this up because it's kind of a lot of information, but please watch this video. Um... I wanted to share my ideas with you guys on what my plans are in the next couple months. Um, but I wanted to see like who I could get on board. So I'm going to be um, getting so, it out. I wanted to pause it right there. My concern is about just this project that she has. I watched this video like three or four times. And then the comments started pouring in and a ton of girls have been messaging me because a lot of you guys may or may not know, but I mentor a lot of girls in the industry. I talk to a lot of girls every day about how they can be safe. I, I have so many things that I do to make sure I'm safe because I've had a lot of situations happen this past year and a half that I've been doing this, maybe two years now, that I haven't been safe. I know that there are situations I've put myself in and there's things that, and events that I've gone to and I know firsthand that that what other people are talking about it's true it's legit so a lot of girls are reaching out to me kind of talking to me about this topic and like wanting my opinion and um once i realized i talked to like at least 12 people like personally they were kind of like telling me what they thought what i'm going to get into so this is actually going to be censored um it will be a trigger for some people but trafficking is something that's like a super big topic especially with SESTA and FOSTA um, I'm not gonna get super in-depth with those things but those are laws that are still being talked about but I've seen like a lot of things regarding trafficking and how that's what gives this industry a bad name so first of all I just want to start here I want to say so there's no hate to Caitlin I just want to say that I do believe that because she became viral so fast, she hasn't really been in the industry for a very long time. Yes, I think she lives in LA. Cool, awesome, great. But the biggest thing is I've been doing OnlyFans since November 2018. I've been doing it for a very long time. Before she went viral, Kaylin did not even have a header on her OnlyFans. Like little things like that matter when you're trying to say that you're going to coach girls. So I paused the video there. Now we're going to keep going and then I'm going to tell you more thoughts and opinions. But I did want to just kind of like get some of this out of the way. We are um, getting a house and creating like a influencer house for OnlyFans girls. So when you pause it right there, it sounds so awesome. It sounds so great. And I'm not trying to be a hater because obviously this is something that I would love to be a part of. Um, I think that if you, uh, I guess I've been a part of something like that now that I think about it, but I'm going to get into that a little bit later in this video. Um, but basically, that sounds great. That sounds literally like Team 10. It sounds like Hype House for TikTok people. It literally sounds like so many other um, houses for influencers, and it's just specifically for OnlyFans girls. That sounds great. 
then you get into so, this. Basically, if you are interested in moving to LA or you already live in LA and you need a place to live and you are interested in becoming a OnlyFans model um, and an Instagram influencer, please um, let me know below in the comments and I'm going to be sending out an application and selecting the top 20 girls to live in a house together and potentially we might have a reality TV show in the work. Okay, so we're going to pause it there before we keep going. Biggest thing is girls that want to start an OnlyFans and then girls that want to become Instagram influencers. What she is trying to say is these people are not already Instagram influencers, they're not already on OnlyFans, they don't know what they'd be getting themselves into. They might not even live in LA. Um, personally for me, I did not know the journey that I would be on a year and a half later, look where I'm at. And genuinely, like, I'm so grateful for where I'm at, but I also think that this is a little bit predatory. I think that like when I mentor girls, the best way to put it is like I'm not saying I'm end all be all but like when I mentor girls and they're under my referral code I make five percent okay of their lifetime earnings on OnlyFans so that benefits me that is why I do it because if I were taking like I spend like probably 30 hours a week like individually helping different girls that are under my referral this is what she would be kind of doing, except these people are not willingly choosing to start OnlyFans and kind of like grow a little bit because I tell them like they have to figure out what they want to do on OnlyFans before I help them. I don't want to pressure them into doing anything they're not okay with doing. I want them to pick their name. I have videos literally talking about why you should not use your real name, what like so people can understand like what they're getting into. Um, that's why I feel like this is a little bit predatory. Um, my own personal opinion and basically we're going to be teaching you guys how to do OnlyFans and how to be successful on other social media platforms such as twitter and instagram and we will teach you how to be independent and successful and make money using all right let's just pause two seconds let's all remember she went viral that is how she got her claim to fame that is how she has had so many people sign up for her OnlyFans. That is how she's had so many people um, follow her on Twitter. That's literally how she made it on Daily Mail. And that's completely fine, but that's not the blueprint to success. And a lot of people it's not going to work with. I feel like she doesn't have enough experience in the amount of time. I know that like for me, I have been doing social media for eight years. But like most girls don't have the opportunity to go viral like she did. And it takes time. Platforms. Um, and you get to live in a house for free with a lot of other okay living in a house for free nothing is free and this is where the sex trafficking stuff comes in so just let's take a second pause take a deep breath Sydney nothing in life comes for free team 10 people are required to work when she says free it's probably not what she even means because you can't have 20 girls living in a mansion or a huge house in LA because LA is expensive no matter what I, I tried moving there can't afford it but um one of the biggest things is like you can't live somewhere free she's going to require them to do something whether she'll they'll be under her referral but she's probably gonna require them to post every day or five times a week on OnlyFans and that's where it becomes pressured for trafficking and work like this work is OnlyFans people don't understand OnlyFans girls no matter what you're posting if it's in a, any nature I'm sorry but you are worker I'm a sex worker all the girls I know are sex workers it's not a bad thing but it is in the sex industry and a lot of people don't understand once they put themselves there they're there like you can't just backtrack and I think that's something that a lot of people just hear free house money and they just assume that it's not going to be hard work taking consequences from people in your real life you know it, yeah and mental health all girls from all over the place and you know build connections with them and network and kind of get yourself started in LA so I'm gonna be sending out applications for you guys to fill out but if you are interested in this opportunity then just comment below on this thread so that I can um, start selecting girls thanks all right so that's the end of the video then we're gonna go over to the Instagram so this is something after I show this so I think it's called LA dream girls 
and there are eight girls that they're following. So I'm pretty sure that uh, these are the girls that are gonna be, that are already chosen. So first we have Bunny, here's Bunny. So she's fo been followed by this person, by this account. Now there's Faith, Faith is, so we have some diversity, this is good. Biggest thing I do wanna say is, when you look at that, number one, you have to worry about diversity. Number two, you have to worry about all these girls are coming from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. I saw one of the ta the places it says they're in Australia. Like, everyone is has been raised differently. Everyone has grown up differently. But, like, I grew up in an area where, like, I grew up around a ton of Hispanic people, you know? And, like, everyone assumes that I'm Hispanic and stuff, but I grew up in an area where, like, Literally like the culture is so different like Dia de los Muertos and like all of those things I grew up with like going to those parties But then if you were in Australia like that's not something that you always are used to so like when you have cultures that are combining and ways of living and just like just Lifestyles that's already gonna be a thing think about having 20 girls in a house that all grew up differently for me I went to two events. I went to one in Miami and one in Cancun both of those events were full of cam girls, OnlyFans girls, that type of vibe. The Cancun event was the biggest hot mess that I've ever been to. Um, and it wasn't just because of the other girls, like it included me, you know? I don't think I really even did anything wrong. It was just the fact that I was a hot mess during that trip. I was honestly unmotivated and it just like, it was hard to like stay organized, you know? So like when you're, like I lived on a plot of like land with probably like 20 bedrooms on in this like jungle area and there are tarantulas and everything like that and like some of the girls were having a great time some of the girls weren't having a great time because they grew up so differently that they were just like no this isn't for me some of the girls drink nightly some of them smoke all the time and that's totally fine but the lifestyle differences make it really hard so like if you're living in a house with 20 girls and like three of them don't smoke and the rest of them do and like they're not used to that that's something that you have to take into account so you know just like little thoughts like that whole trip that I had in Cancun was like really hard because like I even left a day early to go to a different hotel because it was just really we didn't have hot water like stuff like that I grew up with hot water you know and like some of the other girls they didn't care like they didn't didn't bother them because they grew up with different lifestyles where like they they grew up like that and like for them it was like literally not a problem the reason why I bring this up is because I was only with those people for like a week <laughs> think about if you actually live with them in LA where everyone is trying to social climb, where they're probably going to bring people over, just all of that. And then take into account that they're not used to doing OnlyFans. Like when I was at that event in Cancun, you guys, it was great. All the girls are on their grind. Here's the thing, a lot of us, we save to go to Cancun. We save our money to get to the point where we can buy our plane ticket, um, pay for our part of the stay so it's not free. We're still working and we're grinding. Like. All of that and then what she's promising them is a free place to stay 20 girls in the same spot and just like free like that's not that's not a, a concept unless she's requiring them to do other things and then it's still not free I just want to bring that to people's attention I do think that it is pretty predatory I think it's a great idea like it's something that I definitely would do for like a weekend event but not saying that it's free I don't tell people how to work their OnlyFans I don't tell people how to do that I give them tips I tell them what I do but I don't ever tell them how to do it I never I have girls on there that do not even post anything that's x-rated at all I, it's all PG content and that works for them and that's totally awesome but like I don't do that so of course I'm not gonna be the one being like this is how you need to run your account this is what you need to post because that's basically what this video is saying and I mean she could have completely different intentions long term like it could be something where it's not predatory so I talked about the actual video itself um I know that she's like now apologizing because she didn't want to come off that way but like now we're gonna get into the next part so I obviously had my experience now we're gonna be talking about other girls experiences because they have been talking about their thoughts and stuff because it's important because there's girls that have been doing it a lot longer than me and they have way more of an opinion. I know that I'm a very opinionated person, but like even for the year and a half that I've been doing this consistently, there are girls that have been doing it almost a decade, maybe more. So, Kira, she tweeted, I've been diddling myself on the internet for seven years. I've lived in model houses, been promised free lodging in exchange for 
and that's the thing it's in exchange for something so she's saying free but in reality these girls might not know what they're getting into or they're agreeing without understanding like fully the situation because it may sound great in person and on paper but until you experience it it's different but it says i've lived in model houses been promised free lodging in exchange for been with sketchy agencies and done the whole moving out of la with no clue what i was doing thing i feel like i have enough experience to say next tweet you don't need this so much can go so bad it's easier than it is has ever been to do it on your own there are plenty of threads for advice don't move into a house with to be working for a stranger with a bunch of other strangers you're better off learning on your own then she says and just to be clear i'm referring to the naked th philanthropist uh video when i first saw her video no one had their opinions out there and i already had formulated mine on this i thought yeah it's a great idea in an idea world not in real life um then you get kira who's been doing it for seven years and like there are so many girls who do mainstream content and like team 10 is a perfect example of these things team 10 has completely built people up and then now they're saying they feel ruined like there are so many people that have come out and talked about that so like there's different like not even in the adult industry there's just completely different examples that are outside of that world so if we were to take the adult industry aspect out of it like there is just like basics that have happened over and over again as examples um and then the other thing too is like i personally feel like the adult industry like you have to make decisions on your own time your own terms I know so many girls that, like, for me, example, I do what makes me happy, I do what I want to do. The content that I make, you guys, is content I want to make. It's something that I don't feel pressured to do. I like doing it. I really love, like, my fans. I love everyone that is part of my world, you know? But when you're going to be living with strangers and technically working for someone because you're not going to be living there for free without strings attached that's when you aren't able to do it on your own terms that's when you'll probably feel violated that's when it's predatory and the reason why I use the word violated is because it's only fans when your content gets leaked or when something is just on the internet or you're having to do something that you're not comfortable doing yet or maybe you're just not in the mood to do it it sounds really dumb but when it's your body you feel violated being pressured to do things that don't feel right in the moment and I have felt that twice in a year and a half and that's because I didn't know and I was new and I did things that I just wasn't ready to do and that's and, and then also like the that was the first example and then the second one is someone else just didn't ask for my permission or my consent on certain things and you feel violated when your content is just priced out there for a price that you're not comfortable with people seeing your body for that price it sounds really dumb but it's something that like you feel like your hard work has just been taken from you but like for me I've experienced two situations where I've genuinely felt violated and both of those I feel like I wasn't even put in very bad situations but they still make you feel violated when it's your body and your body is the one thing that you can keep away from the world and your mind and when you put those things out there like I make these YouTube videos like you guys know I did not post a lot in 2019 and that's because I was struggling so much with putting myself on the internet and being vulnerable in a different way on in the adult industry that I didn't want to share my mind, I didn't want to share my thoughts, my feelings, what was going on because then I was just giving a whole part of me away. So like that's like, I don't know, my biggest concern, I definitely am not sending hate to her because I think it's a great idea when it's an idea. I think that when it's executed and it's a reality show, a YouTube show, and that's what I'm going to get into next that's when things can go wrong so the next point I had is um I've been doing this a year and a half I've been on YouTube for eight years you guys I since I was 12 years old I've been making videos and it's insane because I spent six years six to seven years making videos consistently and like yeah I would sometimes take breaks but like last year was the first time in my life that I didn't want to make a video and talk about my feelings talk about what's going on in my life talk about my daily routine or anything like that because I felt like I was giving too much of myself away when I would be making my videos I just it just was too much at the time like as you guys can tell 2020 I've kind of gotten back into it like I just had to get used to it you know like I love making videos but it was just so hard for me to like share that much of myself that's all of me at this point you know with the world and I feel like when 
this is predatory in the sense that like she knows that this is going to financially benefit her which i think is totally fine and great when you're putting in work for these things awesome i totally believe that that is something that should happen i think if you have built yourself up whether it's by going viral or not like just if you have a following and you can offer something it's a business transaction now what i don't like is the saying it's free and not explaining why there's strings attached i don't even know what strings would be attached but free isn't free the other thing is when you get girls that are inexperienced i could see her saying hey let's get a group that's so experienced and all these girls are great on OnlyFans already they know what they're doing they've been doing it over a year but like you don't want to take new girls put them in a house make a show completely show the world every single thing about them from their mind their personal room their personal belongings their personal problems and then on top of that have them have an only fans and be showing other things that they're already being vulnerable to because that's just a recipe for disaster i know that firsthand i know that there are videos that i have privated because i posted them in 2019 and like five minutes after i posted i'd take it down because i didn't feel ready to share that part of my life or myself with the world and i think that like there will be strings attached i think there will be contracts and i don't think she's stupid I don't think that she is trying to ever put ill will on people. I just don't think she has that much experience in this particular area. And I don't think she's part of the sex worker community, which when you host an event like that, to even have it be remotely successful, you have to be part of the community, understand. And I just don't think that she has enough experience to be that person. That's my own personal opinion. Um, there's a lot of other opinions that I will throw up here as I'm talking right now but I just feel like this event would be positive for the community I don't think it'd be positive for those girls yes they might make money they might gain fans but they will feel a prisoner in that house like some of the people from team 10 have said and I've met a couple people from hype house and team 10 I've been to an event that sounds so similar to this in certain ways and I just my my gut feeling says no and then there's a ton of under other industry people that continuously are saying this is not a good idea and they are veterans they are people that have been doing this way longer than me and they're people that have probably a thousand more experiences than me and as someone who thinks this is a great idea I do think that it's a great idea I just don't think that long like in reality it could turn out well unless she has other people on her team like if she were to have like say myself a girl who's been in doing it for like 10 years maybe someone who's like um like an og like sarah j helping out then it could maybe be different like sarah j is like probably one of the most helpful people that's ever helped me in this industry and then there's a couple other people that have been amazing you know throughout my whole journey but you can't take someone who's only been doing this for less than a year in that format you know at that level and expect them to be able to pull this off and have a positive experience for all those girls because everyone comes from different lifestyles you know that's kind of my my thought process that's my two cents there's probably a lot more that I've thought about in the past week but I just wanted to throw this out there because I genuinely believe that she does have good intentions I want to end this video off by saying I do believe she has good intentions I do believe it's a good idea I just don't think it can be executed properly to be beneficial for anyone. I think that having events like this could be really great. I've been to events like this, but I feel like she needs other people that have more experience rather than taking inexperienced girls and showing this predatory nature that's kind of been occurring. But I do wanna kinda end this video on this. She made I this video. Did it really? Saying I am not upset that anybody's asked me questions. Um, I understand that I didn't present all the information. Honestly, the reason that I didn't present all the information is because there's a lot that goes into it. I'm actually trying to start a legitimate business. I will have an HR team. I will have like contracts. I will have like actual like employees. Like all the girls will be employees. They will get paid. They will have contracts. And they're right there, employees get paid, have contracts, just like I said. And that's where the strings come in. And I don't think that her first video, I think it was very predatory because it gets people excited and they don't see a video like this. There's a lot of work that goes into it um, besides just like moving a bunch of girls into a house. Like everything is going to be regulated and by the books. And I didn't really know exactly how to express all of that in one tweet. I was just trying to start my ideas somewhere and I get people on board. Totally get that. From there. 
Um, but what I'm upset about is the fact that a lot of people are saying things about me that are like really serious accusations and a lot of it's going like very viral and a lot of people are seeing it and then it, it gives me a bad image and I know all of you have probably been the victim of like being canceled on social media or whatever you want to call it and like I'm I honestly don't think anyone's actually trying to cancel her like I just want to pause this for a second like I'm definitely not trying to cancel her I know a lot of other people that I know are not trying to cancel her I think the biggest thing is just like explaining to girls because she hasn't really explained like you would be taking on a lot like people don't know that they're taking on so much responsibility you know i'm not saying that i'm perfectly in the right and i will definitely always want to explain myself but it's really hard to explain yourself when it feels like everybody is attacking you and you're being canceled for something that is an assumption um but it's and not so an assumption i am really happy to like answer anybody's questions about my ideas and what i'm doing but my idea is not to exploit sex I was I mentioned in a tweet that I was looking for some new girls because constantly on my platform girls are messaging me asking me how could how they can get started with OnlyFans um, where do they begin how do they get promo I'm in hundreds of promo group chats that I've started trying to help girls get in contact with other OnlyFans or Fan Centro excuse me girls and be able to have that exposure and I want to do it on a larger scale and I'm almost mimicking what some other influencers are doing by like there's houses where they bring in all t like tiktokers and they yeah like high costs create a like a house for all of them to connect and like help each other and stuff like that and that's really where my idea was stemming from so cool watched your video i just want to say a couple things I understand that she feels like she's being put on blast, but she's the one that chose to do this idea. You have to be okay with criticism, and I feel like no one's actually trying to cancel her. I don't think that she's a bad person. I think that, like, it's just a predatory nature that it's going, like, the way that she asked for new girls because that's something that, like, she didn't preface. If you're going to ask for new girls and you're not going to say all the information, like, she said she didn't say all the information, don't put it out there. Make a thread with, like, a million things you know, a million videos if you really have to, to get all of it on that thread. Um, that one video is a minute and like 40 seconds. I know that you can just continuously make videos and post them as a thread and people can watch that and it would really have helped if she would have like thought through everything before posting it. Um, I know that her LA Dream Girls thing is, it's a great idea and that's my biggest thing is like it's a great idea now seeing it come to fruition and seeing it be a positive influence because the TV show is not gonna be as positive I feel like and um, just seeing where it goes from this point but that's I don't think that she should be canceled this is where the thing is I think she had good intentions I think that it came out predatory though that is my final word that is just kind of like what I want to talk about I didn't want to get like too deep into all of this but I think that it's important to talk about I think that like I know I actually have a lot of girls and females that watch me. I know that I've mentored a lot of girls, and I want to add that in. She makes group chats. I do the same thing. Um, maybe not at her scale, because she has such a huge following now, and she has so many people that are looking up to her. So, like, I understand to, like, probably a smaller magnitude for myself, but, like, making those things, helping those girls, all of that, like... That's great. That's on the internet. Once you bring them into a house, it's different. And yes, TikTok houses are a thing. A lot of people get stuck in those things and they make that decision. I thoroughly believe that like it's their decision to make, but the predatory part is just being like, I'm promising you all these things and we're going to help each other. We're going to network and do all these things and live in a house and not have problems because I've lived in houses with lots of girls. And I know that problems come fast. So that's kind of just like what I want to say. I definitely send her love. And if she's ever watching this or if anyone ends up sending her this, my biggest thing is don't send her any hate. Don't try and cancel her. I just wanted to get my opinion out there because I feel like as someone who's been in it for a year and a half um, and then doing social media for eight years, I just know what comes with social media itself and then what comes with the vulnerability of this. And it's completely different than social media itself. So... With that being said, I just wanted to send you guys all the love, and I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, 
Twitter, if you guys want to see my OnlyFans, or if you guys need to make an OnlyFans, you guys can use my referral code. I will have it right here. And everything else will be in the description down below. I love you guys so much. Seriously, I don't mean any hate in this video at all. Like, I'm just saying this with love and my opinion. And we're all allowed to have our own opinions. So I wanted to share mine. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, babes.